is the news and talk of Texas. Now, it's the Rick Roberts Show on 820 AM, 99.5 FM, HD2, News Talk 820, WVAP. Well, I know there's got to be a few hundred million more like me just trying to keep it free. Yeah. Rick Roberts starts. Rick Roberts starts right now. Four minutes after the hour, 2.04 the time. Welcome to Court of Public Opinion. Your voice, your opinion, yes, your attitude, which is not always a bad thing, on the uh, issues of the day. Uh, Lee, do you have my promo that's been running all night and through the day? Because I, I received tons and tons and tons of email. Rick, you can't do that. You can't talk. You, what are you talking? Christianity on the radio? What's wrong with you? You can't do that. Well... Yeah, I can, especially when uh, The View, uh, I don't watch The View, and I- I'll be honest, I've been doing this on television and radio for a couple of decades, and, you know, I-, I listen critically to what people say. It's impossible to understand what anybody's saying on The View. It's like white noise, everybody talking at one time, except, of course, Joe Joy Behar. Uh, well, listen to the listen to the uh, the promo. Go ahead. You know, as Christians, we're taught to turn the other cheek. But at some point, you may run out of cheeks to turn. Well, then you have to confront the evil in front of you. And in this case, it's the view. They took a shot at Vice President Pence and his Christian faith, mocking him for talking to Jesus, even calling it a mental illness. Join me today at 2, your afternoon drive. Rick Roberts, 2 to 5, on News Talk 820 WBAP. Okay, now, that wasn't so hard to take, was it? I I mean, you're not uh, twisting and and turning in the wind, are you? You know, as Christians, you're taught to turn the other cheek. Well, at some point, you run out of cheeks. And I'm sorry, I I will no longer sit idly by letting morons like uh, are on The View uh, downgrade Christianity. Basically, uh, Pence, Vice President Pence, said that he talks to God uh, in prayer. And, you know, I'd like to think I do the same thing. I don't get a lot of answers, but, you know, that's probably as it should be. Uh, Joy Behart said that, uh, well, you know, talking to Jesus and then thinking he talks back, that's a mental illness. That's a mental illness. What if it had been a devout Muslim? Would she have opened her mouth? No. No. Not once. As a matter of fact, the whole kit and caboodle would have been shut down. You know, I, I'm sorry. It, it's it's no longer an issue of, well, you know, just uh, go on down the road, just rise above it. Um, no, not anymore. You know, I'm not big on boycotts because very rarely do they hit the mark. Well, I'm, I'm boycotting big oil, whatever that is. Um, so I'm not going to go to the Shell station. All you're doing then is hurting the franchise owner that's probably working 18-hour days to break even. You know, the, the people that you're targeting with a boycott very rarely, if ever, uh, feel the impact of a boycott. But I'm, I'm telling you right now, it, uh, I'm not saying she's Satan's spawn, but she needs to take a very hard look at uh, at what she said. Now, I'll uh, I'll have more up for you. But uh, Tuesday on uh, ABC's The View, they were discussing Omarosa, uh, forget it. Uh, the Vice President Mike Pence and co-host Joy Behar mocked Pence's faith. Now, she only got away with it because he's a Christian. Again, uh, had it been a devout Muslim. This would have been this would have been it. She'd have been gone. Uh, Behar ended the segment agreeing with all the hosts. If given a choice between Donald Trump and Mike Pence, they'd rather have Pence as president. Uh, okay, I don't care. <laughs> what difference does it make? Get over it. He's president, and as presidents go in their first term, not too bad. Tax cut for everybody. The economy's booming. People are going back to work. Um, you know, we've got all the right enemies once again. Uh, for uh, I put that first year of Trump up against anybody. Yeah, you may not like the guy. You may think, well, he was one of those billionaire playboys. He was. You know, I'm not looking for a spiritual advisor. I take care of that myself with my pastor. I'm looking for a guy that can add two and two and more often than not come up with four. You know, that's all I'm looking for. Co-host uh, Sonny Hostin 
said, I went to law school in Indiana. He is hated uh, in Indiana. Okay, I don't care about that either. I, I don't care about the personality politics. I don't care about the, the politics of personal destruction. I'm just sick and tired of all the whining, crying, wetting your pants over this thing. He's not going anywhere. He's not going to be impeached. And if this was the excuse Behar was looking looking for, um, I'm sorry. She barked up the wrong tree. Uh, Joe Behar said, it's, it's one thing to talk to Jesus. It's another thing when Jesus talks to you. That's called mental illness. And she's talking about Vice President Pence. If I'm not correct, uh, hearing voices talking about Jesus answering prayer, uh, if uh, hearing that's a mental disorder, isn't it? Sherry Shepard said, you know, Joy, as a Christian, that's just par for the course. You talk to Jesus, he talks back. What concerns me is how long the conversation is with Jesus. And then Joy Behar comes back and says, uh, you think he talks to Mary Magdalene with his wife around? I, I mean, this is, this is beyond the pale. You know, this is one of those things, well, forget it, Rick. You know, they're just lost souls. No. You know, you, you, you've turned one cheek, then the other cheek, and then cheeks you didn't even have. It's time you stood up for yourself. It's time. I don't know when Christians uh, started getting uh, the, the short end of the stick, but I guarantee you, just as sure as I'm sitting behind this microphone at 11 minutes after the 2 o'clock hour Central Standard Time, I guarantee, had this been a, a devout Muslim and she said something uh, similar or analogous to what she was saying about uh, Christians, she'd be off the show. She'd be gone. I'm I'm sorry. I call it a boycott. Call it what you know. I've been boycotted more times. I can't even count in the last twenty years. Um, and generally speaking, all it does is help my advertisers. Um, so maybe that would be the same thing. But Joy Behar needs to realize we're not going to sit here and turn the other cheek back and forth and back and forth. Not anymore. Not anymore. As a matter of fact, uh, trying to get Pastor Jeffries on this too. Well, Rick, why don't you just let it go? No, I'm not going to let it go. All right, uh, 12 minutes after the hour, 1-800-288-WBAP, 1-800-288-9227. Your call straight ahead in the court of public opinion. All right, 16 minutes after the hour. Glad you're along. Joy Behar from, uh, from the, uh, the View. If you watch that, you may want to reconsider. Ladies and gentlemen, Joy Behar. It's one thing to talk to Jesus. It's another thing when Jesus talks to you. Exactly. Okay, well, that's different. That's if I'm not correct. My question is, can he talk to Mary Magdalene without his wife in the room? <laughs> okay, how, how blasphemous can you get? You know, I, I've said uh, for time immemorial... I'm not trying to shove God and religion or any of that down anybody's throat, uh, but I'm sick and tired of sitting around, well, you know, they're, they have the right to their opinion. They can say whatever they want. Yeah, they can. And they can suffer the consequence for what they say. You know, it, it's a mental illness if Jesus talks back to you. And can he talk to Mary Magdalene if his wife is in the room? What, what, uh, what, what was she thinking? Seriously. Um, all right, Doug in Fort Worth. Doug, thanks for waiting. How you doing? I'm doing good, Rick. How you doing? I'm well, thanks. Uh, I became a born-again Christian back in 86. Uh, before, I, before I found Jesus, or I should say Jesus found me, uh, I used to uh, aspire to some of this uh, lunacy of Joy Behar, Behar's and the rest of the Jews' view. Uh, that show is repulsive to me. I don't watch it. I don't ever turn it on there. I do everything I can to stay away from it. But to, uh, to get to the bottom of this, I have a personal relationship with my Lord. He talks to me. He tells me things. Well, no, wait, guy, wait, hey, hang on. Um, uno momento, por favor, mi amigo. That's for all the new citizens sure. in Dallas. Uh, Joy Behar would say, if you think Jesus is talking to you, you must be afflicted with some type of mental illness. Yes, I, I, I heard you make that statement. Uh, the real reality is, why don't they hear from me? 
He's there for all of us. He wants to have a relationship with them, but yet they poke fun at him and they and they try their best to humiliate every Christ, Christian that stands for their faith. You know, I'm one of these Christians that uh, doesn't lay back. I'm one of these Christians that's ready to take on the fight because we are under attack. And it isn't just from Hollywood. It isn't just in the uh, news business. It's not in, in music. It's all over everywhere, politics and everything else. What do you, th- what do you everyone- suppose, Doug, if I may? What do you suppose the reaction would have been nationally, if not internationally, had Joe ba- uh, Joy Behar um, been talking about a devout Muslim saying, well, wait a minute, you think Allah talks to him? Well, you know, that's a mental illness. Uh, what, what do you think the reaction would have been? Oh, it would have blown up right in her face. She'd have been off so fast her head would have been spinning around backwards. You know, but because it's Christianity and they feel free to take their shots at us, fair game. And we won't say anything and we turn the other cheek. They think we're weak. They see that as a sign of weakness. Well, tell Joy Behar and The View, there are Christians like me out here that we may turn the cheek, but we'll only turn it so long. Well, that's, Doug, that was, uh, yesterday I was, I was incensed. I, I, it was, you know, you're free to be the biggest idiot you could, you want to be in America. That's, you know, one of one of your rights. Uh, but I guarantee you, I guarantee you, um, had this been a devout Muslim, anyone other than a Christian, she would, she'd be off the show permanently. Oh wow, that's so progressive. Wow, she really dropped a bomb there. Well, why? Why? Christians are fair game for anybody. Uh, Pastor Jeffries uh, here in uh, in Dallas, uh, he uh, he didn't sit by. He was on Fox News, uh, the television um, news, uh, slamming Joe Behar for the left. It's always open season on attacking Christians. Why? Because there's rules, guidelines, parameters, um, things you have to follow. There is shame. There is uh, all of that that goes along with uh, taking action or no action on something. You know, he, uh, Pastor Jeffries, good for him. He went off on the co-host of The View for mocking Vice President Mike Pence's uh, Christian faith uh, yesterday. It all started when The View played a clip from Celebrity Big Brother. Now there's a show you don't want to miss in which uh, former White House staffer, uh, I can't pronounce the last name, uh, Omarosa something Newman, said the Vice President thinks Jesus tells him to say things. Sonny Hostin Um, expressed concern about Pence's religious fervor. Fervor? He said he he prays, and he gets answers in prayer. He gets direction. That's fervor? I guess it is to the left. Uh, And said she doesn't want her vice president speaking in tongues. Okay, what does that mean? You've pulled out every stereotype. Yeah, well, you know, he's kind of one of those religious nuts. And I don't want my vice president to be speaking in tongues. Really? I I don't want to be in the same zip code when you make statements like that. Uh, it's one thing, she said, to talk to Jesus. It's another thing when Jesus talks to you. This is Joy Behar. That uh, <laughs> that hearing voices, it's a mental illness, isn't it? Isn't it? Jeffrey's wondered on American Newsroom. That's on Fox. What would have happened if Behar, here you go, he said aloud, what if Behar had been mocking a devout Muslim? ABC would have had her fired in a nanosecond. You know, if you're on the left, when it comes to attacking conservative Christians, it's always open season. You know, like the left has been talking, yeah, uh, beside my bed is a Bible with my name on it, which I don't read near enough, and uh, there are long guns in the closet and f- handguns where I can get to them. So I guess I'm one of those uh, people that clutch the Bible in their guns. you you got to be kidding. I'm, I'm done. I'm through uh, saying, yeah, okay, you get a pass. You get a pass. Insult me, please. Okay, you get a pass. Insult my uh, religious belief. Oh, thank you. You get a pass. No. I didn't, at some point, at some point, and I think you know where it is individually, at some point, you say, that's enough. I've turned as many cheeks as I'm capable of turning. Now I'm calling you out. 
And now I'm calling you out. Okay, ABC, you know, forget Joy Behar and the rest of those knuckleheads. I mean, they're they're just trying to do something uh, to cause a stir to get people ginned up. What about ABC? ABC, is this uh, is this how you treat Christians? Well, we're going to be an all uh, Muslim station. Is that what the deal is? Do I sound aggravated? I am. I I am aggravated. All right, uh, two twenty four the time. I tell you what. Let me um, go to the WBAP newsroom very quickly. Very latest breaking news. Uh, active shooter in uh, in Florida. We're trying to hook up with uh, Westwood One reporter. We'll bring you that information as it becomes available. Um, uh, teachers and students are remain barricaded inside the school. Uh, the uh, shooter is still at large at a high school there. We'll bring you the very latest information uh, as it becomes available. I'm re- Yeah, I'm upset. They're, they're asking me in the other room if I'm upset. Yeah, I'm upset. 1-800-288-WBAP, 1-800-288-9227. Um, forget Joe Behar. She's, uh, she's inconsequential. She's irrelevant. What about ABC? How uh, how how are you doing with this thing? All right, uh, two thirty three the time. Uh, we're going to bring you uh, the latest information from this Florida high school shooting, just as soon as uh, possible. As I mean, it literally just happened, and uh, the FBI has responded to the shooting. Of course, uh, the Broward Sheriff's Department. Uh, the shooter is still at large. Um, they think they may have identified, they're calling him a person of interest now on the run. Um, we don't have numbers as far as, uh, injured or God forbid anyone killed, but it's a SWAT situation at, uh, uh, at this high school. Uh, so we'll bring you that information. As a matter of fact, we're working right now to get uh, Westwood one reporter, uh, on the scene. So we'll have that for you. Uh, in the meantime, uh, somebody just emailed Rick, why, why are you so upset? Because I have, don't you ever get to the point where you hit the wall? You know, as a Christian, you're told, turn the other cheek, cheek, turn the other cheek. Um, and then, and then what passes for entertainment television comes up with something like this. It's one thing to talk to Jesus. It's another thing when Jesus talks to you. Exactly. Okay, well, that's different. if I'm not correct. But my question is, can I talk to Mary Magdalene without his wife in the room? <laughs> it, uh, you know, you can be as blasphemous as you like, uh, I suppose, in this country, as long as it's directed toward Christians. Um, would Joe Behar, Joy Behar uh, had even opened her mouth about this if it were a devout Muslim or any other faith for that matter? No. You know, Christians historically, well, we turn the other cheek. You can say what you want. Uh, you can take a crucifix, turn it upside down in a beaker of urine um, and call it art. Um, you can do, yeah, we're just going to sit over here. We'll be quiet. At some point, you say, okay, that's enough. Uh, Joy, ABC in general, you may want to remember what happened when the national audience said, you know what? Uh, I'm through with the NFL. You know, these owners um, can't control their employees. Uh, You're going to diss the American flag and the national anthem? Fine, I'll find something else to do. And they did. The ratings, you know, took a nosedive. Uh, Apparel, uh, NFL apparel took a nosedive. Um, uh, And they didn't get it back, not even for the Super Bowl. ABC, that can happen to you with a view. You know, if you can't keep your idiots in in line... um, or maybe you just don't care. Maybe you don't. Well, ABC, the non-Christian network, is that what it is? Uh, let's go to Katina in Arlington. Katina, thank you for waiting. How you doing, Katina? I'm good. How are you? I'm fine. Thanks. Well, I just want to say that, I mean, we're upset because this is personal. The person who emailed you. Mm-hmm. And I must, I must have mental illness because I talk to God and Jesus every day. And I'm actually excited that I can that I have been growing spiritually and being able to hear the Holy Spirit talk to me. So I guess that means I have mental illness too. Well, but, you know, sure. I, I, you you must be um, just irreversibly um, unsettled in your emotions to think somebody's talking. Well, according to to Minister Behar, that is uh, must be a mental illness. 
Well, you know, I'm really glad you're talking about this. And I actually think it's kind of ironic that um, this is happening on, you know, Ash Wednesday and leading up to um, the biggest holiday that Christians celebrate, you know, the persecution of Christ. Right. Right. But, you know, in a Christian majority nation, I never thought that this would happen, you know, where we're so publicly ridiculed. And um, I don't know. I'm emboldened. I'm emboldened to call in and talk about my story. But, um, no, I do hear the Holy Spirit talk to me, and that is something that doesn't come easy. It hasn't always happened, and it only happened when I grew spiritually. So, well, Katina, I guess you can make fun, but I'm not. No, 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 no. I don't make fun. I support you in, in your belief. And, you know, people can say, well, Rick, you and Katina and a handful of other people, you may believe in this Holy Spirit thing, and the, Jesus talks to you. You know, I would be um, a train wreck. Without uh, that in my life, I don't talk about it a lot uh, because this is not the God Hour. It's a talk show. Uh, but uh, yesterday, I'd had it. I, that was it. I'm done. Um, you know, if you're going to call out Christians like that, I'm going to call you out. You know, turn uh, turn about is, is fair play. Um, jo, Joy Behar, I don't know if she's agnostic, atheist, uh, uh, subscribes to Catholicism. I don't know if she's Jew. I don't know what she is. And it doesn't matter. You know, the, the, mocking anyone, let alone a vice president, um, for your faith, asking about Mary Magdalene and uh, does does Jesus talk back to you? Well, that's a, that's what people call a mental illness. No, Joy, that's your perception. Um, Katina, good for you. I appreciate the call. Jay in Fort Worth. Jay, thanks for waiting. How you doing, Jay? Well, Rick, how are you, sir? Good. Uh, I, I just, I think kind of, uh, I, as though I, I agree with you completely, 100%, I think you're missing the bigger picture. And recently, Jimmy Kimmel used that word, uh, words mental illness, to describe something that, uh, a, a part of gun control. And everyone was, you know, the big question was, okay, define what mental illness is. This is the left working underneath the scenes, behind the scenes, defining in our culture what mental illness is. It's just it, it's just she, this Joy Behar lady. She she's just another nobody. She's a scapegoat to the left. So she goes out there and says this. It's because they have an agenda. No, you're right. There, uh, Joy Behar is a is a, her reputation for a hair on fire liberal precedes herself, um, if that's even grammatically correct. Um, and that's fine. You know, be a liberal. Uh, don't, uh, you know, don't come from a point of, uh, of factual foundation. Don't do it. Do what you want. But once you start mocking people for their religious beliefs, I think uh, there's a consequence to be paid for that. You know, just like the NFL. Uh, I'm, uh, I'm not going to stand for the national anthem. I'm not going to stand for the unfurling uh, of the flag. Okay. You're, you're free to do that. And the fans, are free not to uh, buy tickets to go see you play or tune you in on their television sets on, on Sunday afternoon or uh, buy their kids or grandkids or nieces and nephews uh, NFL apparel. All of those things took a hit because there's consequence for action. That's something that uh, that little Joy hasn't uh, realized, evidently. Either that or she feels she's 10 feet tall and bulletproof. I'm not sure. Uh, but there's a consequence for everything. Uh, let's go to Rocky in Frisco. Thank you for the call, Jay. Rocky, thank you for waiting. How you doing? Good afternoon, Robert. How are you doing? I'm good. Mr. Roberts. Well, you know, I agree with you 100%, but this is symptomatic, in my opinion, of a much bigger problem. We've been, we're locked in a battle for the soul of our country, okay? And on one side of this argument, we're going to have people that have a moral bias, and on the other side, they do not. So then, so now it becomes a battle of the most diabolical. And those who have a moral code, it's really hard to win because we have to go in the exact opposite of our base philosophy, which is loving each other and peace and trying to get along. No, I agree. It, it, what what you heard coming off uh, that excuse of a television show. Um, what you heard is symptomatic of a much larger issue in this country. Um, the left uh, hates religion. Uh, religion really has nothing to do with a personal relationship with Christ, but uh, they hate anything, 
anything uh, that smacks of rules, regulations, guidelines, parameters, code of conduct, decorum. I could go through the list, but they don't want any of that. They want you to be dependent on them. They will decide what you believe. And, and hey, it happens every day. It happens every single day. Uh, like I said, ABC must have, uh, you know, maybe they just think it's, it's that cool. We're so progressive on this, uh, this show, so progressive, so out there in touch with the people that we can say anything and get away with it. Is that what they think? Truly? You can say anything and get away with it? You might want to check with the NFL owners and see if that worked for them. to talk to Jesus. It's another thing when Jesus talks to you. Exactly. Okay, well, that's different. That's different. That's called mental illness, if I'm not correct. My question is, can I talk to Mary Magdalene without his wife in the room? (laughs) All right. I want to welcome uh, to the show Dr. Robert Jeffers um, with the First Baptist Church here in Dallas, Texas. You may have seen him on uh, Fox's America's Newsroom. Pastor, thanks for being with me. Well, great to be with you, Rick. Uh, you know, I, I kind of hit the wall yesterday. I, you know, I was raised, you turn the other cheek, you turn the other cheek. Uh, at some point you run out of cheeks to turn and you have to call these people out. Uh, I mean, as you pointed out, what, what would Joy Behar's fate be had she been mocking a devout Muslim's faith? Uh, she'd be gone. In a nanosecond, ABC would get rid of her so quickly, I mean, it would make her head spin. But, I mean, this goes to prove that, you know, when it comes to the left, it is always open season on conservative Christians. And uh, that's what this is about, and it continues to be this way. And, you know, look, Rick, I'm asked all the time, hundreds of times, how do you explain evangelicals, conservative Christians, voting for a secular candidate like Donald Trump by the largest margin in history. Well, this is how you explain it, Rick. Christians are tired of being bullied in the public square for their faith. And uh, I think of people were looking for a president, a vice president, who would respect their beliefs rather than ridicule them. And in many ways, the election of Trump and Pence represents a rebellion by conservative Christians who are tired of having their faith mocked in the public square. No, I I think you're right. You know, I've, I've been involved in commercial uh, radio and television for gosh 24 years now as a talk show host and if people ask yeah i believe in god jesus christ and the holy spirit you know that that you know at scripture deny me before men and i'll deny you before the father that got my attention at a very early age uh, now i i don't try to force my beliefs down anyone's throat but if, by the same token i'm just like everybody else um, I hit the wall, you know, stop calling Christians out. Uh, and to do so, there's a consequence, whether it's ABC, whether it's that specific show, have they forgotten the consequence that was paid by the NFL? Well, I think they have. I think they live in the New York City bubble, uh, and they really absolutely have no respect for what they call flyover country, where the majority uh, of Americans and certainly conservative Christians live. And, uh, you know, I know Vice President Pence. He's a friend of mine. I've talked to him recently. Uh, He is a most loving, kind, compassionate man you would ever meet. There's nothing hateful about him, but I think the reason the left is after him is because he has committed the unpardonable sin with the left, and that is he still holds the personal belief that marriage should be between a man and a woman, and the left cannot stand him for that. And, you know, I agree. Not even all of our listeners would agree with that viewpoint, but you can hardly call that an extreme viewpoint when it's the teaching of Islam, Judaism, and Christianity, and has been for thousands of years. But that's what this is really all about, Rick. I, I think you're right. I think it's the left trying to make headway uh, trying to say, uh, well, I was raised by my grandparents, and decorum was a big thing with my grandmother. Um, I think uh, it is about social change. It is about uh, taking who we are fundamentally and cherry pick uh, this or that and leave the rest. Uh, it doesn't work that way. It doesn't work that way in Christianity. You can't pick and choose what you want and then go on down the road. It, it's uh, but it, it, people like this need to be called out. It, it's not so much Joe, uh, Joy Behar. It's ABC. 
Um, sure. You, you, it, what is that now? The non-Christian network. You can't. You can't do this. You couldn't do this with any other faith. Uh, but as you say, it's always open season for the left uh, when it comes to Christians, and that's got to stop. How do we stop that? Well, I think, first of all, we'll call the ABC switchboard and tell them and register uh, uh, disapproval. You know, somebody told me who worked at one of the networks, when they get one letter, a disapproving letter, I mean, they they figure that that is tens of thousands of people since so few people write letters. So I would write a letter of disapproval. I would call the ABC switchboard to get their attention. But, uh, uh, I mean, this is just – this is not right because, Rick, when they insult – uh, Mike Pence, they're not just insulting the vice president. They're insulting tens of millions of conservative Christians uh, who believe exactly the same way he does. Yeah, it's uh, uh, yesterday, and I didn't have time to get in it, but we were devoting most of the show to the fallen uh, Richardson police officer. But, uh, yes. uh, you know, this bugged me all night long. I mean, it just, it was, you know, someone has got to call these people out. Like I say, Joy Behar, um, it could be any one of the knuckleheads on that show. But ABC, are you trying to tell us something? Um, because if you're trying to tell us something, uh, we're receiving the message that uh, Christians aren't welcome. Um, and if that's the case, be honest about it. Otherwise, uh, you know, clean up your own house. Well, that's right, Rick. And look, you know, the Bible predicts this. I mean, Christians have always been in the minority and have been persecuted because of their beliefs, because it's not people just hate Christians. They hate God, the real God of the Bible. They hate not the imaginary God they conjure up, uh, but they they hate God. They hate his ways, and so they're going to hate Christians who embrace biblical views. But I still think we have a responsibility to call out the hypocrisy, and this Joy Behar incident just shows once again the hypocrisy of liberalism. Those who cry the loudest for tolerance usually are the most intolerant people when it comes to (laughs) ideas they disagree with. Absolutely. You know, it's sort of like socialism. Uh, They've done so many surveys with millennials, and they all have a favorable view for the most part uh, about socialism. Well, socialism is a great idea until you run out of somebody else's money. Uh, I mean, and the same thing goes here. I I mean, you know, the thing that bothered me as much as uh, what she said, which was you talk to Mary Magdalene when your wife's in the room, uh, if Jesus talks back, that's called a mental illness. Uh, the crowd laughed and applauded. Uh, well, it shows how ignorant they are of Scripture. You know, Jesus said in John 10, my sheep hear my voice. I know them, and they follow me. Jesus was saying the signal proof that you belong to him is that you do hear his voice. So the fact that Joy Behar does not hear the voice of Christ should surprise no one. It simply (laughs) proves more than she probably wants to admit to. Uh, I, I've got to ask you, because we're up uh, and we only had you for a short time. I, you were in a meeting, and I appreciate you stepping out and talking with us, sure. t- talking with uh, Dr. Robert Jeffress uh, with First Baptist Church in Dallas, Texas. If you were going to give a message about this, well, this is just symptomatic of a much larger issue in this country. We all know that. Uh, what, what would you suggest people do? I mean, people are ready. They're ready to reach out in a tangible way and say, you know, I've turned every cheek I have. Uh, now yeah. it's my turn to start calling you out. Yeah. Look, I think, and this is what I say in my church all the time, we do not preach politics in my church. People are surprised to hear that I don't talk about Donald Trump any, every week or even uh, hardly any week. But we don't preach politics. But what I do say, as Christians, we have a twofold responsibility. We need to push back against evil in our culture, not because we're going to save the culture, but we want to give it a little longer so that we can do the second thing, and that is to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ to as many people as possible before the end comes. And we're not going to change our culture, Rick, until we change the hearts of the people in the culture. And that's what becoming a Christian is all about. Amen to that, um, Pastor Jeffries. I really appreciate you coming on on such short notice. I just, I, I'm, I'm serious. I just couldn't deal with this anymore. <laughs> it, it just, uh, it went all over me. Thanks for highlighting it. I love listening to your program when I'm driving around, so thanks for having me. Pastor, thank you so much. I appreciate that. Uh, Dr. Robert Jeffries uh, with uh, the First Baptist Church in Dallas, Texas. 
you may have seen him on uh, Fox uh, Television News, Fox News America's newsroom, um, and he blasted Joy Behar. You should, too. You should, too. As a matter of fact, I just gave you a phone number, David. I know i got a break here. I gave you a phone number. What is, what is that number? That number is the ABC News Desk. News Desk. Okay. All right. Yeah, is that the 212-456-2700 number? Uh, yes, sir, it is. Yeah, okay. I just want to make sure that's, again, I'm not telling anybody to do anything, but that's 212-456-2700. That was the number I gave you? Yes, sir. That that 212-456-2700? Yes, sir, 27. So, like I'm not asking anybody to do anything. I just want to make sure that that's what that was, that 212 yes, Four five six twenty seven hundred ABC New Desk. Okay, could you repeat that number back to me? What number was that again? That was two one two four five six two seven zero zero. Ah, I see, I see. Well, I know there's got to be a few hundred million more like me just trying to keep it free. Yeah. Rick Roberts starts. Rick Roberts starts right now. But it's just simply wrong uh, for ABC uh, to have a television program that expresses that kind of religious intolerance. And uh, I, 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 we're better than that. Our country's better than that. I'd like to be lied about it, but I really can't. Not for my sake, but for the tens of millions of Americans who cherish their faith. And I just, I can't be silent. That, the voice of your vice president, Pence, and he shouldn't be silent. No Christian anywhere should be silent any longer. Do you not feel you you have come to a crossroads, a, a junction, if you will? You got to take one or the other. You know, we've taken God out of just about everything to the degree that morons wrapped in idiots like Joe, Joy Behar can make that type of uh, statement. That's religious intolerance. I thought the left was all about tolerating everything. Well, they are, Rick. Unless they disagree with you, then they can't tolerate it. Well, that sort of defeats the whole purpose, doesn't it? Uh, let's go to uh, Jenny in uh, Glen Rose. Jenny, I appreciate your patience. How are you, Jenny? I'm great. How are you? Good. Um, I, I don't get to watch TV because I do home help, but I just happened to be in the car and I was listening to WBAP and I heard your statement. So I'm not going to give those people pub publicity by using their name of, I'm going to call her sad hee haw <laughs> okay. instead of joy Behar. And I think the, because every time someone says her name, it's just like NASCAR. They get they get more publicity, and I wondered if WPAP could make a list of the sponsors that are on air when that show view, when that show is on TV, so that we can write the sponsors, because you cut the dollars off, and the show will, will fail. Well, I'm not nearly as concerned with the Joy Behar or any of the rest on that show as I am about ABC. Um, ABC evidently um, is tolerant, religiously speaking, except when it comes to Christians. And if that's the case, I think we should probably know that. Well, they're narrow-minded liberals. And I mean, the, the, how, are you, how else are you going to punish them other than cut the money off? Well, and if the if the sponsors aren't going to back the show, the show's going to fail. Then they're going to have to find some other soapbox. But I agree. I mean, we're in a minority now, and we can't defend ourselves without offending someone. Right. Right. Well, and unfortunately, uh, most people don't realize there's nothing in the Constitution. I know. I've read it. Uh, okay. That gives us a right to not be offended. It's not. It's not there. Um, so, you know, people, uh, people that are looking for true tolerance, um, you know, maybe, maybe Christianity is too tolerant. I, I don't know. I'm throwing that out, but it's well, like, that's uh, what we've been taught. It, that's what we have been taught. Yes. We've been taught not to judge and to turn our other cheek. Well, that's fine until you have no more cheeks to turn. And then at some point you got to call these people out. 
Um, and ABC is the one that should be called out. You know, I don't, you know, I don't know how intelligent uh, Joy Behar is, seemingly not very, uh, but ABC, they should know better. I mean, at least uh, a comment from uh, ABC Corporation saying, um, you know, it was unfortunate what was said. It is basically religious intolerance. We don't subscribe to that on this network. And, um, you know, Joy Behar will be taking a unpaid vacation for a couple months and then she'll be back. Uh, I mean, if that happened on the radio, I'd be, uh, I'd be sitting twiddling my thumb someplace. Um, it's, uh, I'm sorry. ABC's got some answering to do. Uh, let's go to Red in Blooming Grove. Red, thank you for waiting. I appreciate your patience. Hi, Red. Hey, Mr. Roberts. Uh, good to speak with you again. Thank you. All right. Uh, let's see. A couple of things. You know, it is no surprise uh, on what is happening these days. Is the Bible does tell us that we will be persecuted. And it does say that we ought to turn the other cheek. I mean, just think about the number of times that we've slapped God in the face when we sin, he turns the other cheek and then he opens his arms and says, I still love you and I forgive you. And that's what we should do. Well, you know, to to the point that we can, I agree. I mean, you know, I'm not, I'm not God. I'm not even a reasonable facsimile of that. Uh, And I turn the cheek all the time. Uh, and have done so for the last couple of decades in this business. But I'm sorry, when uh, at some point you have to call out these people, and that's what I'm doing with, with ABC. I'm calling them out. Um, if you're a religiously intolerant network, if that's something you've morphed into uh, with uh, shows like The View, then so be it. You have every right to do whatever you want. It's your network. Uh, but I think, uh, you know, you might take a lesson from the NFL when the NFL decided, well, we want to keep uh, all these malcontents happy uh, so they can uh, they can sit down for the national anthem. They, you know, they don't have to show any respect. Uh, we just want to make sure that we win the game. Um, they suffered the consequence of, uh, you know, being uh, in a free country. Uh, what happened? Ratings went down for television. Ticket sales uh, were off. And uh, the apparel, which NFL makes a pretty good penny on uh, on apparel, all of it went down because there was a consequence to be paid for uh, for dissing the fans. Well, you know, I'm sorry, ABC, um, there may be a consequence to be paid. Uh, if there is, you're certainly you're certainly entitled to run a religiously intolerant network, if you please. Um, but then again, you know, don't gripe, moan, complain, uh, and and cry when you have to suffer the consequence. Uh, Twelve minutes after the hour, three twelve to time. I'm Rick Roberts, News Talk eight twenty WBAP. All right, 17 minutes after the hour. Uh, many of you are emailing. You've called uh, ABC News. I don't know if it'll help or not. You know, uh, evidently, ABC is the uh, is the tolerant network until you disagree with them. Uh, evidently, they have uh, no problem airing hosts of shows that are religiously intolerant. You know, that's always the way on the left, isn't it? You know, they espouse tolerance for everything, the sun and the moon and everything in between, until they disagree with you, and then they go right to the politics of personal destruction. Joy Behar, you don't know what's going on with uh, our vice president in his, his prayer time. You have no clue. So for you to say Jesus talking to Pence is a mental illness says more about you than it could ever say about the vice president. If you don't like the vice president because he's Republican, then so be it. I mean, join the club. Everybody else on that network is is of the same frame of mind. But don't go to religious intolerance trying to make your point. Um, Basil, I believe, is how you pronounce it. Am Am I saying your name correctly, Basil? Uh, it's Basil, but yeah, it's fine. For, forgive me, Basil. Thank you. It's okay. Yes, sir. 
So, um, yeah, I was just calling Rick to uh, – I, I just wanted to, you know, I'm a Muslim conservative, you know, and I'm, you know, I, I, I'm completely – uh, committed to my faith, but you know, I, I feel like a lot of Christians um, are sort of letting things slide too much. You know, uh, the, there's real there's real value in these Judeo Christian um, uh, axioms. You know, and um, I just feel like if if the moderate, you know, to, to use a, a term that's sort of used for Muslims a lot, but if the moderate quote unquote Christians don't really start to embrace their faith and their heritage and you know what the Judeo Christian structure has to offer then you know i feel like we're going to it's going to return either way because that's every time these marxists you know start taking over a culture in a certain country whatever religion was there to begin with comes back with a vengeance and you know we i, I don't want to see the more extreme types from the you know the christian um, group let's say uh, emerge because as a muslim i know what it's like to have a bunch of extremists come out and hijack every you know your your understanding of your religion and everything well, the problem is, it's been open season, to coin a phrase, it's been open season on Christians in this country since I was a little kid, uh, because Christians always turn the other cheek, they'll always give a pass, um, you know, and I'm sorry, you've got to start calling people out once in a while. Um, Joy Behar is not really the issue. You know, what she said was despicable, it was religiously intolerant, uh, it would not have been said uh, uh, against any other faith uh, that I'm aware of. Uh, this is ABC, the uh, the intolerant network, as far as I'm concerned. Mm -hmm. I would agree with that, absolutely. Uh, um, it's, you know, as a Muslim, you never have to worry about something like that um, on a network. It, uh, Joy Behar would have had three simultaneous root canals without Novocaine um, before she would ever say something like that against another faith. She just knew yeah. she could say it against Christianity uh, because Christians uh, are so meek and so mild and know, you know, that's okay. You know, we're yeah. going to forgive that. Let that go. And I'm, yeah. I'm here to say, no, don't let it go. Call it out. Exactly. It, it, you know, that's, that's, that's why, if, you know, I feel like there needs to be more people standing up because unfortunately, you know, the people in my community uh, have uh, rallied behind the left. And as far as I can tell, because, you know, we share the Abrahamic tradition with, with, the, with the Jews and the Christians. So as far as I can tell, this is an enemy, you know, and the enemy of my enemy is my friend type of deal. Right, and that right. never ends well. No, it never, ever ends well. As a matter of fact, you usually, and when you're talking about countries and cultures, you usually end up um, with an unholy alliance that you got to deal with some, uh, somewhere down the road. Uh, good call. I appreciate it very, very much. Let's go to Melissa and White Wright. Uh, Melissa, thank you for waiting. How you doing? Fantastic. Thank you, sir. Um, first, I want to say thank you because I know you and all your callers are in a further on your spiritual journey than I am. Um, full disclosure, I'm a recovering Catholic. Um, I grew up in the 90s where it wasn't cool to be like God, and that's basically what they're using. Um, but now I'm almost 40, and I pray to God every day. And one of the things I pray is that I hear God talk to me. So I guess I'm really conflicted as to why that's such a terrible thing. But worse than that, um, why aren't people with faith standing up and saying it? I mean, isn't that what we're supposed to do? Well, exactly. I, I mean, you know, I, I get the part, you know, people say, well, what would Jesus do? Well, as much as I want to be a good person, I'm not Jesus. Um, I'm Rick Roberts, and, you know, I jump the rails more often in a day than most people do in a month. At least I know where the rails are to get back to. Uh, when it comes to something like this, like the, the view, um, you know, people have to call out the network. They're the ones fostering and uh, presenting a religiously intolerant show. I mean, doesn't it say, and again, I'm, I'm new at reading the whole Bible thing, um, somewhere that part of the job is to even just talk to talk to people about God. Like, not push it. Like you say, I, I really respect the fact that you're like, I'm not jamming this a trope. But, like, you're standing up. So where where's the line? Where do we turn the cheek and where do we call them out? Well, I, I think, uh, you know, you do everything's nonviolent, obviously. I mean, you saw right. you saw what happened to the NFL uh, when yeah, the when I thought it was, ownership I thought refused it was to deal with it. 
Uh, they refused to deal with, you know, players taking a knee during the national anthem, and they got what they deserved. Uh, you know, the ratings went down on TV. The ticket sales went down. Apparel, uh, NFL apparel went down. So, I mean, luck. Um, <laughs> you got to call them out. Evidently, ABC forgot that lesson. Uh, you know, you are presenting product for the consumption of the viewing public. And if you upset them, um, then there's probably a consequence to be paid. Believe it or not, uh, I just uh, was handed uh, ABC advertiser list. How about that? How about that? Hmm. Well, gosh, why don't I tell you what the advertisers are on ABC, and we'll go from there. Uh, that's a nonviolent way to approach the situation, is it not? Uh, let the uh, ABC network, uh, I gave you a, a number earlier, didn't I, David? Yeah, I, I think I did. Yes, sir, you did. Uh, gosh, I've forgotten what that number is again. <laughs> uh, Give me just a second. No, I got it. 212-456-2700. Uh, did, you, did you write it down this time? 212-456-2700? Sir, I have it written down. What number? Two one two four five six twenty seven hundred. Would that be two one two four five six twenty seven hundred? That is correct. Okay. All right. Just wanted to make sure it was two one two four five six twenty seven hundred. Not that I'm suggesting anyone do anything. All right. Three thirty three. The time. As you uh, heard Eric Bushman speak uh, from the WBAP newsroom, uh, the superintendent of that Florida high school said there are numerous fatalities in this shooting. Um, at least uh, 14 victims in the school shooting. It was previously reported that it was 20. Um, details are still way, way too sketchy. We're going to bring you that information um, as it becomes available. I heard the, uh, the congressman uh, talking about this is uniquely American, this type of slaughter. It happens nowhere else. Well, you can think, uh, think, uh, liberalism, no rules, no regulations, no guidelines, no being held to a standard. You can think that the decline of society, that's what it is. Um, all right. Uh, let me get back to your calls. If you've been on hold for a while, I appreciate your patience. And, uh, we're standing by for a Westwood one, uh, reporter on the scene to bring us up to date on that, uh, that shooting in Florida. Uh, let's go to Rose in Denton. Rose, thanks for waiting. How you doing? Hey, Rick. How are you? I'm good. Thanks. I, I've been calling that um, number you gave us, and I kept calling, and they kept hanging up, and then I finally got through to one guy, and he was real rude, of course, and, and the minute he found out why I was calling, he hung up. So I uh, called back about three or four more times, and I got a, a lady, and she said um, she w they were in the busy – they're filming or something, and they're doing some stuff, and she was too busy. And I said, oh, you better be taking a log of this, all these calls, because this is serious. What Joy Bumblebee Bear did <laughs> to uh, – to us Christians is just absolutely outrageous to this world. What was her I'm response just, to that? Well, I'm sorry. I'm busy. Hang up. <laughs> yeah, well, they're going to be busy answering the phone for a few hours, I would imagine. Oh, I bet they are. I bet they are. I, the five times I called, they either hung up on me, didn't answer. You could tell somebody was on the other line, and they just sat there and then just hung up. Well, Rose, good so for I, good I for you. So... <laughs> I'm getting mad, well, and I'm getting <laughs> upset because we're we're going to do what we did in 2016. We got to get out there, people. All of us have to get out. These Democrats are not saying how many little tiny uh, uh, elections they're winning, and we're not promoting it enough. So we got to get mad and get out there. These people cannot take over the White House again. They'll put us under again, like the last eight years. Oh, of course they will. So, of course, and that's the I plan, gotta, Rose. Yeah, we got to do something. We got to get excited. We got to really get excited and do this again, like we did in 2016, 2016, because this is getting outrageous. This, these 
ungodly people, these Democrats, are ruining our country. They're ruining it. I can't even believe anybody in this country even votes Democrats. I, I can't believe there are that many ungodly people. For her to even say that God, Jesus doesn't talk to us, oh, my gosh. It's a mental disorder, she says. You know who talks to her, don't you? The <laughs> God of this world. That's who talks to her. The devil himself, he talks to her. That's why she's so evil. Rose, I appreciate your passion probably more than you know. Uh, good for you. Keep. I just got this email in, and I, I won't give out the name because I didn't say I could. Uh, Rick just called ABC. First three answered, and they said it was a wrong number. Went to their website, dialed the same number, asked me how I got the number, told of my opposition to Joy Behar, uh, her comments. Um, they told me they had more important things like a shooting in Florida to deal with. Called back. A man answered, told him the game they were playing was wrong, registered my thoughts, the man at ABC said, is this coming from a Dallas radio station, and more specifically a Dallas radio show? I said, uh, Joy Behar's offensive comments went all across America. What difference does my location make? ABC had no response. Said if she uh, disparaged a Muslim, you would have fired her. Told him to think about that. Think about uh, how many vote with their pocketbook. Take a stand. Uh, ha ha. Uh, yeah, I, I'm, <laughs> I'm sure you're making a difference. Um, you know, Joy Behar, um, I don't, I don't know what your problem is. I, I, I truly don't, but you wouldn't have done this to any other faith other than, uh, Christians period. Cause well, we won't have to worry about that. We'll, we'll, uh, we'll, you know, we'll, we'll worry about that. If something happens, she was trying to be sensational. She was trying to be shocking. She was trying to denigrate, um, Pence as a vice president. Uh, let's go to Leah in Dallas. Leah, thank you for waiting. How you doing? I'm fine, Rick. Thanks for taking my call. You I just bet. wanted to share something that my mother that passed away in 93 used to always tell me growing up. She said, just because the Bible says to turn the other cheek doesn't mean you have to get beat up. Okay, say that again. Just because the Bible says to turn the other cheek does not mean you have to get beat up. Well, you're right. You're absolutely right. Um, oh. Well, it is. am I free to share this, this right here? Okay. Am I free to, to share that? I believe so. Uh, ABC, because so many of you have uh, expressed your concern uh, about ABC's religious intolerance uh, by way of Joy Behar and her comments. ABC has now just called my program director uh, about the conversation I'm having. Well, gee whiz, ABC, uh, don't bother my program director, which is my boss, by the way, uh, give me a call directly. I'd love to chat with you. Um, so uh, if that's if that's the case, you know, give me a call. I'm the easiest man in town to find. 1-800-288-WBAP. 1-800-288-9227. Uh, let's go to Gary in Keller. Gary, thank you for waiting. How you doing, Gary? Hey, Rick. Uh, wow, you're, you're leading the charge and I really appreciate it. Uh, you know, I listen to you all the time and uh, very much enjoy your show. It's uh, it's always insightful and and interesting. But today, it uh, I think it actually uh, is 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 serving a great cause. And I just I, a lot of what I was going to say, it's kind of already been said. But you know, just because you're, I, I echo that lady that just spoke a minute ago. You know, just because you're a Christian doesn't mean you have to be a doormat. True and. Uh, you know, you think about it. If if we all, what would have happened when Hitler was 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 doing what he was doing, conquering half of Europe? Japan was in, on the march through, across the Pacific, and we were literally threatened with extinction. If all the good Christians in this country had just turned the other cheek, where we had been? Yeah. You know, sometimes you have to just fight evil. And I heard a. I'm not. I'm not. This not a Bible, but I. I heard someone say one time a priest. I think. And it, it, it's always stuck with me, you know, to, to fight evil is to worship God. And, uh, you know, 
one other thing about, you know, I think there's a lot of mis- misconceptions about what a Christian is. And, and just remember, I'd like to remember, remind the audience of one scripture that comes to mind. And it was, he who acknowledges me before men, I will acknowledge before my Father in heaven. No, I, you know what? Um, as a talk show host for a couple of de- uh, decades now, there, you know, that, that one scripture, uh, you know, if you deny me before men, I deny you before the Father. I don't want to even be in that zip code. Uh, no, if, sir. If, if ABC has wants to become um, the religiously intolerant network uh, and showcase people like Joy Behar, uh, I mean, look, let's be honest. There's, there's certain things I can't say on the air, um, you know, for various reasons. FCC, uh, company code, uh, program director doesn't like it, whatever it happens to be, um, if if ABC is okay with religious intolerance, then I think that should be uh, that should be known. That should be something that uh, we're aware of, right? Uh, as far as I'm concerned, um, not not even a peep, not even. Uh, well, you know, it's Joey. She's got the freedom of speech. Of course she does. She's got the, she's got the right to be the biggest fool on television if she wants. Um, that freedom of speech applies to everybody. Freedom of speech wasn't uh, necessarily put in uh, as a uh, uh, in the Constitution because of people that agreed with everyone, but offensive speech to a point. Now, Joy Behar can say whatever she wants. It's a reflection of uh, the network, just like what I do behind this microphone is a reflection of uh, this uh, broadcasting company. And you, about the time you forget that is the time you're looking for another job. Um, like I said, ABC can, can have 50 Joy Behars, but don't forget the message and that was sent with the NFL disrespecting the flag, disrespecting the national anthem. There was a price to pay uh, for that freedom of speech. And there should be a price to pay for the network uh, that would uh, showcase somebody so religiously intolerant. As I said, or Pastor Jeffrey said, um, there was no way, no way she would have opened her mouth about a devout Muslim, um, a Jew, um, anybody else, but you know, you can say it about Christians because number one, it's a Republican Christian. And number two, Christians never, uh, you know, there's never any pushback from Christians. There's no flack. There's, well, I'm here to say that's enough. That's enough. ABC, uh, you should have a consequence for your action. And your action was, uh, supporting a show that airs on your network wherein the host was religiously intolerant. You know, you can speak against the president, the vice president. You can do that all day long. You do that all day long. Um, but when it comes to being religiously intolerant, then I think uh, maybe you uh, should lend an ear to those people that aren't happy with that. All right. Uh, let me step aside very quickly. 344 the time. Man, you guys, <laughs> you guys are... Uh, uh, yeah, people within the sound of my voice, um, you are doing something. Ev- evidently, uh, ABC got the message, at least partially. They're contacting my program director, my boss, uh, which is a pretty good guy. I mean, I've been around a long time. I've met a lot of program directors. Um, but, uh, you know, I, I he's not going to come in here and say, stop talking. He's, he's not like that. Uh, but you guys are uh, you guys are doing something out there. You you truly are. You're making your voice known, um, and I'm getting uh, I'm getting an earful. Uh, Three forty five. The time one eight hundred two eight eight W B A P one eight hundred two eight eight nine two two seven. Your calls straight ahead in the court of public opinion. <laughs> Forty-nine, the time, and of course, uh, we'll bring you the latest information as it becomes available. Um, we're hearing now at least two uh, have been killed in a school shooting in Florida. Perhaps uh, upwards of uh, fourteen to twenty uh, have been injured. The shooting uh, suspect 
is now uh, at the hospital. Um, we're, we're, as you might imagine, uh, the details on this are very, very sketchy at best. So um, we've got one, two, three monitors going right now. So we will, uh, we will bring you that information as it becomes available. It is breaking news, um, and you know I never like to throw something out there in speculation. I want to make sure that uh, you know it's been vetted. Uh, at least two killed in the school shooting, upwards of fourteen to twenty injured, and the suspect is now at the hospital. Um, so I'll bring you, uh, I'll bring you more information. By the way, the the two killed in the school shooting that was uh, that was sourced by a teacher uh, inside the high school. All right, let me get to your calls, uh, Steve and Abilene. Steve, thank you for waiting. I appreciate it. How you doing, Steve? I'm doing great. I appreciate you taking my call. It's it's just heartbreaking when we hear things like that. But I'm hearing so many things of Christians come across the radio, and one of the things that we don't understand is that if they're talking about the Bible, you believe the Bible. In Luke 22:36, Jesus was speaking, written in red. He told them to go buy swords. If you don't have a sword, go get a sword. And then his disciples came back and said, "Well, we have two. And he said, "That's enough." What he was talking about is at the, that part of the Bible, 22, that's getting to the end, and he knew what was going to happen, so he told him to go get some swords. And everybody talks about turning the other cheek, but it comes a point where you don't turn the other cheek. We're supposed to wrestle not against flesh and blood, but principalities. Principalities is a principle, and that's what we're supposed to combat is principles. Yep. Yep. So, I uh, I agree with you. Um, it's uh, uh, you know I in the last couple of decades I have turned the cheek perhaps too many times. Um, I we all. I, I'm not doing that anymore. I mean, when yeah. whether it's Joy Behar or ABC or anybody else, I'm going to start calling them out on it. Um, so uh, yeah, it's about time we need to stand up, and that's everything. You know, it, it, to the the Christians in the audience, he talks about the armor of God. What do you do? You put it all on and you stand. You don't sit down. It's time to stand up. Yeah, I agree with you. I agree with you. Thank you uh, so much for the call. I appreciate it. Uh, Jay in Frisco. Jay, thanks for waiting. How you doing, Jay? Hey, Rick. Thanks so much for taking my call. Can you hear me? I got you fine. Okay. I just don't understand why uh, we as Christians are offended. Uh, I have listened, and I listen every day to your show, and it's a great show. But on this issue, I don't understand the offense. I, I'm, I'm wondering if we're more offended by the, um, the, the, the politics versus the religion. Uh, Jesus himself was not offended, uh, and they mocked him all the way up uh, to the crucifixion. I don't understand what we're trying to prove by attacking ABC or attacking Joy Behar uh, when Jesus didn't do that, well, I'm he stood I, on the okay, go on. this. This Jay, I, I got to be honest with you. Uh, uh-huh. For twenty plus years, I have turned the other cheek. Uh, when Joy Bay, the, to me, this isn't political at all, at all. Um, oh, it may be to her. I mean, she hates. She's a huge liberal, but um, it wasn't that. If she would have, you know, gone on a rant about how much she hates uh, the Republican vice president. You know, that, uh, look, people do that every day, all day, and they do it on ABC. Um, this was about mocking, mocking a man's faith. The man happened to be the vice president of the United States. If you don't like him, you don't like his policies, you don't like, uh, you know, what he did in Indiana, then so be it. That's, you know, that, I, there's nothing wrong with, with uh, voicing your displeasure. But when you start mocking someone's faith, just because he's a Christian and you know you can get away with it, that's religious intolerance. You know, I'm pretty sick and tired of liberals telling me to be tolerant, only to turn around and when they don't agree with something, um, you know, they come out on a on a national network um, mocking a person's faith. Um, that's not okay. And yeah, Jesus would probably handle that differently, but I'm not Jesus as much as I'd you know, like to get closer to that zip code, I got a long way to go. Um, for me, I'm tired of turning the other cheek. Um, it, like I said, if if the Vice, Pence, uh, Vice President Pence were a Muslim, you wouldn't have heard a peep out of her. Or if you did, 
she'd have been fired on the spot. I'm just tired of Christians being doormats. Uh, Jay, I appreciate the call very much. I'll look forward to the next one. 3.55 the time. I'm Rick Roberts. News Talk 820 WBAP. Is the news and talk of Texas. Now, it's the Rick Roberts Show on 820 AM, 99.5 FM, HD2. News Talk 820 WBAP. Well, I know there's got to be a few hundred million more like me just trying to keep it free. Rick Roberts starts. Rick Roberts starts right now. It's one thing to talk to Jesus. It's another thing when Jesus talks to you. Exactly. Okay, well, that's different. That's different. That's called mental illness, if I'm not correct. My question is, can he talk to Mary Magdalene without his wife in the room? <laughs> There you go. That's uh, the voice of religious intolerance. Now, see, in New York, uh, in that mentality, in that mindset, that's that's considered being hip. You know, Joy Behar is just way too hip for the room. At least she was on that show. Um, not a peep out of the network. Not one peep out of ABC. So one can only assume that ABC supports and protects religious intolerance. Now, David, I had you uh, make some phone calls, um, and uh, you basically got put in, um, let me forward you to this person and that person and that person. So uh, at the end of the day, and and thank you so much for this. I appreciate the the list of advertisers here. Um, You know, I've never been a big advocate of boycotts because they very rarely, if ever, hit the mark. You know, there used to be this guy in San Diego, divorce big oil, divorce big oil, divorce. And that's such a sham. You know where the lion's share of taxes for gasoline go? The government. Yet the government, well, it's big oil, it's big. Okay, stop. All right? We were born at night, but not last night. Um, so people, are, we're going to boycott big oil. So they stopped going down to the corner gas station. All you're doing is hurting a guy that's got a franchise, works an 18 hour day. And really his profit line is not on the gas. It's on the slim gyms and the Coke you buy. So, you know, i just never have been big on boycotts, but I am big on having my voice heard. Maybe that's why I've stayed in this business so long and you should be too. I'm, you know, I'm ferociously protective of my audience, whether I agree with you or not. And your voice should be heard. It's as simple as that. I mean, if this moron wrapped in an idiot named Joy Behar uh, can be so religiously intolerant on national television, you ought to be able to have your voice heard as well. Uh, Ron in Dallas. Ron, thank you for waiting. I appreciate it. How you doing, Ron? Oh, I'm doing great, Rick. How are you today? I'm good. Hey. I was thinking about it, and if you really analyze what Joy was saying, she's basically putting Jesus on the same on the same level as Santa Claus and the Easter Bunny. It's kind of cute and okay to talk to him, but if you actually believe he's real and that he talks back, then you're crazy because he's just a fantasy, you know? Yeah. But I, I'm kind of wondering what Joy would think of me as a minister. I actually believe that Jesus talks through me to people, you know? And I believe he does through you as well. So she would really think I'm nuts. Yeah, well, yeah. You'd, you'd be in a home, uh, in a rubber room someplace, uh, according to Joy Behar. Uh, you know, I never, exactly. rem- I never remember. You know, maybe, maybe I just blocked it out. Uh, remember when Hillary Clinton said she used to channel? Who was it? Eleanor Roosevelt or uh, whatever it was, and and Bill backed her up on it. Um, no, I don't yep. remember anybody saying that woman's crazy. Um, you know, you just don't mess with a person's religious freedoms. You don't mess with the, the faith. And she went too far. And ABC, at the very least, should have come out and said, okay, you know what? We got all got caught up in the moment, and, uh, you know, we don't uh, subscribe to what Joy said. And after saying it, you know, she apologizes uh, if it offended anybody. Of course it offended people, uh, every, just about every yeah. Christian you talk to. But since they're Christians, they don't worry about it. Uh, because Christians will take anything. You remember what they did to Mrs. Reagan, though, when when she talked oh. to 
Lord. Somebody did excoriated her. Oh, yeah. Yeah, she was, uh, yeah, exactly. Uh, I mean, she was called everything in the book, and, you know, people looking for her down rabbit holes. It was horrible. It was, uh, and, you know, I don't, I, I personally don't believe in that kind of stuff, you know, clairvoyance and all that kind of jazz. Uh, it no, just, I don't either. But, you know, still, um, you know, that wouldn't even be, as bad as, uh, I mean, what she said about Mary Magdalene, what she said about uh, Christ. I mean, you know, wait a minute. What happened to the religious tolerance? I've heard nothing uh, but uh, religious tolerance under eight years of Obama. What happened to that? Uh, I couldn't tell you. It just went away. So so where are you a pastor, Ron? Well, I'm not a pastor. I'm a minister. Oh. Um, I'm actually the men's minister in our church at uh, People's Fellowship in Forney, Texas. Oh, good for you. Good for you. Yeah. Well, it'd be in, are you, you, you ought to bring this up on Sunday and just uh, see what kind of input you get. Oh, definitely. Definitely. Yeah. And let me know. <laughs> call me back and let me know. Ron, I appreciate the call very, very much. Let's go to Bruce in Sherman, Texas. Bruce, thanks for waiting. How you doing, Bruce? Hello, Rick. Thank you very much. Uh, I just wanted to say I called that New York number two, and uh, they, uh, as some other folks have said, they hung up on me a couple of times. But I finally did get a hold of a young lady, and I, you know, sort of read the riot act like most people have on their mind and uh, reminded them uh, of the NFL and such. And uh, nothing seemed to faze the lady. She was uh, pretty flippant and, and such and dismissive uh, until I, at the same time I was talking to her, you said that you had gotten your hands on that uh, sponsor list. And I just passed that right along, and her demeanor just changed like you just <laughs> instantly and uh uh so uh i would have to say that at the end of the conversation she did say thank you she didn't just hang up but i wanted to make one other comment as well about what pastor uh jeffers had said about uh if she had made that comment about a muslim that she would have been uh she would have been fired so fast her head would spin and i would surmise that her her head probably spins anyway a la linda blair wow well it, uh, you know, it's, it's, when you talk to people on the East Coast, uh, it's always an event. Um, you know, they, they're very, uh, bombastic, very loud, very aggressive, very heavy handed. Uh, and if you don't kowtow to that, uh, to that demeanor, they usually back off and, and, you know, act normal. Uh, but in this particular case, don't tell me it's, uh, you know, I'm, I've been getting emails and people, uh, that have gotten through said, uh, uh, well, don't worry about it. It's just a, it's just a Dallas, uh, talk radio show. Uh, luck. The view airs all over the United States. It's not, uh, not well. I don't think it's coming from just this show. It's probably coming from other people. <laughs> Absolutely. And, and I would just say that, uh, uh, I'm not particularly, uh, uh, great as a, in the Christian faith, but it didn't, it, it didn't make me any difference. When I heard that, that was, that was fighting words. That was like few other things in life. That was fighting words. Yeah, as somebody emailed me, uh, you know, they can they can sit there and talk about movies and talk about how much they hate Republicans and how much Donald Trump is a womanizer or was a womanizer. They can do that all day long. But then you attack a man's faith and mock it. You mock his faith. It's like one emailer said, man, at that point, it's on. And uh, it should be. Uh, 12 minutes after the hour, 4.12 the time. I'm Rick Roberts. This is the Court of Public Opinion on News Talk, 820 WBAP. But it's just simply wrong uh, for ABC uh, to have a television program that expresses that kind of religious intolerance. And uh, I, 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 we're better than that. Our country's better than that. I'd like to be lied about it, but I really can't. Not for my sake, but for the tens of millions of Americans who cherish their faith. I'm, I just, I can't be silent. And I don't think you should be silent. Um, I don't think uh, most Christians need to remain silent anymore. Um, Joy Behar said, it's one thing to talk to Jesus. It's another thing when he talks to you. Uh, hearing voices is a mental illness. And, of course, the crowd went wild uh, before Sherry Shepard offered a limited defense 
of Vice President Pence. Uh, she said, as a Christian, that's just par for the course. You talk to Jesus, Jesus talks back. What concerns me is how long is the conversation with Jesus? Man, these, these folks are so out of their element. Behar um, then said, well, can he talk to Mary Madeline, uh, Magdalene when, without his wife in the room? Yeah, Joy, that means you're mentally ill, too. Remember when you went on Morning Joe uh, last year, plugging your new anti-Trump book and said, God told you to save the country? Anybody remember that? I was reminded uh, uh, by a news article. Joy Behar went on uh, went on uh, Morning Joe, that piece of garbage, uh, plugging her new anti-Trump book and said God uh, told her to save the country. Um, yeah, okay. Uh, she said that she received a message from above that she's the one chosen meant to save the country from Donald Trump. Um, and if uh, she was joking, that's even worse. Um, so Joe Scarborough at the time prompted Joy Behar to say why she wrote the book. And she responded, because I'm being told by God to save the country. Uh, I mean, it's the view. Yeah, it was totally ridiculous, but it's par for the course. Liberals can have God talk to them, but conservatives can't. Evidently, speaking in tongues, getting queasy over the phrase values voters. Is that a joke? The double standard in hypocrisy is already apparent. But are daytime television liberals so depleted in material that they've got to insinuate wrongly, by the way, that Vice President Pence speaks in tongues and they did by the way uh they said man i don't want to i don't want my vice president speaking in tongues and that it's weird that god talks to them folks uh luck it's a gift that sadly faded away in life but i thought this was so beyond the pale i think god speaks to all of us in different ways no it's not a parting of the clouds with light shining down, it may be, who knows? Um, Democrats wonder why they do so poorly with uh, with flyover states. Well, this is why. Uh, and ABC evidently supports religious intolerance. Uh, Bonnie in Plano. Bonnie, thank you for waiting. How you doing, Bonnie? Hi, Rick. I'm doing really well today. I was a proud deplorable until today, and I guess now I'm a proud crazy deplorable. <laughs> Mentally unstable, yes. And since it's my 26th wedding anniversary today, I guess my husband's also a proud crazy deplorable. Oh, well, congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. I just wanted to call in and remind your voters who owns ABC. Are you talking about Disney? Exactly. Yeah. So... If we're talking about accountability, being responsible for what you're putting on air, then Disney owns part of that. And I teach my children, your voice is loudest with your pocketbook. And like you said, Rick, we prove that with the NFL. Now, consider the next time you want to go see a movie or you want to buy merchandise for your kids. And that includes all the Mar Marvel and all the Star Wars franchise now because Disney owns all of that. Yeah, it's a it's a sad state of affairs when you have to, to have to go to those extremes. I, I mean, when it comes to the NFL, you're not going to meet a bigger football fan than myself. Um, but all the people I've talked to, they were done with it. They were through with it. I mean, you can do a lot of things in this country, but messing with your kids or messing with your country and the symbol of your country is just. I don't care whether you're Republican, Democrat, left, right, short, tall, fat, thin, doesn't matter. People aren't going to put up with that. Right. Well, when Disney is supposed to be a very family-friendly, a.k.a. tolerant, inclusive corporation, well, then Disney needs to take this very seriously and um, make a response because I agree. he's going to want it to go to the theme parks, which, by the way, I just saw they're increasing the prices on anyway. Um, but yes, I, I, you know, speaking through your po pocket, but I'm teaching my kids that, and that is unfortunately, like you said, what we have to do. Bonnie, good call. I appreciate it very, very much. Steve and Lucas. Steve, thanks for waiting. How you doing, Steve? 
Oh, I'm doing wonderfully. I hope you are, too. I am. And before I bring up the point I'd like to make, by the way, she just mentioned about how Disney is supposed to be a, uh, a family-friendly fr- company. I think I would take, I think I would take a sec- exception with that. They're an extremely aggressive, for-profit company in a business that is among the most hardball businesses you can be in. Uh, they are, they all listen to their pocketbook just like anybody else. And if uh, if non-Christian values make them money, that's what they'll do. Yeah, you're right. Um, this this notion of Christians needing to be meek. There is nothing, nothing wimpy about Jesus in the Bible. Absolutely nothing. And the the point I want to bring up to front and center is near the end of his life before he was, he was killed and then resurrected, when he went into Jerusalem, he went right into the seat of power, right in front of all the people who ran that, that Israeli society at the time, and he spoke right into their teeth. He called them out for hypocrisy. He told them what the truth was. He stood his ground. And in the most hostile environment, he was a proponent of his points of view. And there's just absolutely nothing wimpy about the guy. And there's nothing in the Bible that calls us to be wimpy. When he was talking on the Sermon on the Mount about uh, turn the other cheek, and if somebody, uh, an oppressor makes you go a mile, go another mile, he was talking to a, uh, a society that was occupied by a hostile force. So he was he was advising them to do intelligent things. So that that's there was nothing wimpy about this guy, and I hope Christians don't think we have to be wimpy. We can speak up and look look in the face of quote unquote power and speak right out to them. I I, I think you're right. You know, generally, uh, I think most people, uh, regardless of their faith, you know, try to get above uh, a contentious uh, situation. But at some point, you just have to say, okay, that's enough. Uh, mocking Jesus Christ, mocking Mary Magdalene, m- m- mocking the vice president uh, for his faith, um, that's, that, you've gone too far. You've displayed religious intolerance, and you're right. There needs to be a response from ABC News. All right, 4.33 the time. You know, I I heard something during uh, Eric uh, Bushman's newscast. I don't know. Maybe maybe things are just bugging me too much these days. Um, Did you hear Chris Murphy? Did you you hear that? Um, All right. Let me give it to you very quickly here. I've got a couple Chris Murphys here, so I don't know which one is which. Uh, I'll play both if I need to. Um, uh, Here it is right here. All right, listen to this. Listen to this. And your first response to this guy would be what? Listen. It only happens here not because of coincidence, not because of bad luck, but as a consequence of our inaction. We are responsible for a level of mass atrocity that happens in this country with zero parallel anywhere else. Okay, well, you're wrong. Um, Yeah, the the anti-gun nuts haven't even waited for the gun smoke to clear uh, before they come out with something like this. It only happens here. It's not true. It's not true. Um, And what are you going to tell me? You're going to tell me it's the hardware if we just get a giant magnet and swing it across the United States and suck up all the guns, we'll be safer? You're a moron, with all due respect, if that's what you think. Um, Liberalism. Liberalism is why our kids are gunning each other down in schools. The lack of parameters, guidelines, um, decorum, uh, standards. um, That If you want to know why our kids are are mowing each other down in high schools across America, it's because because of liberalism. There are no parameters. There are no uh, guidelines. There, no one is held to a standard. Uh, there are no winners, no losers. Uh, everybody gets a trophy just for showing up. Uh, we've done this. He's right about that. But it has nothing to do with guns. It has to do with the, we don't discipline kids anymore. There is no consequence for action. Um, there is no shame. Everybody's a victim. If everyone's a victim, there can't be a bad guy, right? All right, let me get your calls. Let's go to Evelyn in Fort Worth. Evelyn, thank you for waiting. How you doing? 
I'm doing fine, Rick. It's good to hear you this afternoon, and thank you for taking my call. Yes, ma'am. I wanted to congratulate you because for the very first time that I can ever remember, somebody from the Midwest actually got through to somebody inside the New York bubble. <laughs> <laughs> and so I think that's remarkable in itself, you know, but um, people who have no respect for anyone else have no respect for themselves either. And it's the lack of respect and acceptance of other people for what they are and who they, not necessarily who they are that makes such a big difference. And, and for someone to attack someone else's faith, and especially Christianity, the reason that woman has the platform she has is because the people who established this country did it partially on the basis of religious freedom. Yeah. And here she opens her big mouth and steps right into it, and then she fusses about everybody else. The woman doesn't have a right to say a word, and she ought to sit down and shut up, and ABC ought to put a stop to it. I, I think at the very least, I mean, these are the people, the left, the liberals. Um, they are the ones that preach to us incessantly about being tolerant of people different from ourselves. And that makes sense uh, to a point until you start to harm someone. Um, and for her to come out with a religious intolerance, um, not once, not twice, but three times during that segment, at the very least, if ABC um, can learn anything from the NFL, uh, you better not upset too many of the people that are purchasing your product or they won't be purchasing it anymore. Well, I, I agree with that completely, but it isn't just it doesn't just hinge on money, although it seems to these days. It really does. But if a person has no respect, not even self-respect, they're they're becoming subhuman. They're not they're not human beings. They have no thought for anyone else. My dad used to say, "Keep an open mind, but my word, don't let it be so open that your brains fall out." <laughs> I've and heard so, that. Yeah, that's good. You know, and so um, I'm older, and I'm I lived through World War II, and I remember the headlines. I remember the horrors of that war, and they said that would be a war to end all others, like. First World War had been supposedly been. Right. People just can't, don't seem able to get along anymore. And one of the first things that can create that kind of an atmosphere is to be so intolerant of others. And you egg somebody else on who doesn't use even as much sense as you have, which she wasn't displaying much of the other day. Um, and and it just disintegrates into into chaos and and dangerous circumstances. I, I can't think that some major enterprise wouldn't see how that would affect their business, but maybe they don't. Apparently, uh, I couldn't get through to them today. I tried several times before I called you, and then I've heard your other callers say that when they got through, people were rude to them. And those people think that there's no tomorrow. I've got news for them. Christianity is a very personal thing. Your belief in Jesus Christ is a very personal thing. But you let enough Christians get mad and irritate them and, and start treating them like they don't have sense enough to come out of the rain, you've got a whole new ball game going. Yep. And that, and you're, you're right. You're right, Evelyn. They, well, they opened the door for you this afternoon, and I think it's great. So that's just really all I had to say. I'm so proud of you. <laughs> well, it was it was uh, it was it was you. It was the audience. I mean, I can I, I can be a catalyst from time to time, but. Um, you know, just like, uh, you know, just like it's true with anything, uh, you know, my grandfather used to say, it's not enough to be right. I never knew what that meant until I got older. Uh, and you know, pick your battles. Uh, you know, I've waited a long time, you know, I let it go, let it go, let it go, let it go. And finally last night, uh, with joy Behar, uh, and those comments, that was enough. That was enough. And Pastor Jeffries of uh, uh, the First Baptist Church in Dallas, he must must have had enough as well. He was on uh, Fox News today. We just talked to him a little bit ago, and uh, you know he he uh, he raised the roof on jo Joy Behar. And now, if ABC is thinking, "Oh, this is great, we're getting a lot of exposure," this is not the kind of exposure you want. Um, you know, they, they used to say. You know, good press, bad press, as long as they keep writing about me, that's good. But not in this case. Ask the NFL owners if uh, if it was good press. Uh, Evelyn, thank you for the call. I appreciate it. John in Cedar Hill, 
John, thank you for waiting. I appreciate it. How you doing, John? Hey, Rick. It's been a while. How you doing? Um, I'm doing great. I'm uh, I'm writing music with super glue. I've got a student of mine that is blind. Really? And I'm writing this music. Yeah, it's it's kind of cool. And uh, I'm thinking of getting a uh, a Bible that is in Braille and sending it to Joy because she can't <laughs> see a dead goat thing. <laughs> But anyway, back to the subject. God has talked to me on several occasions, and uh, twice he talked to me so clearly that it scared the heck out of me, you know, because I've been a Christian since I was nine. I'm now 56. But when I scroll through the TV and I see that show, my remote doesn't work fast enough to get me away from that show. <laughs> and thanks to you, I'm going to watch it tomorrow. And if she doesn't apologize in the first 15 minutes, then I'll use that remote again and get out of there. Well, Because uh, this is ridiculous. It, it is. I, I mean, look, uh, we all want to be tolerant. We all want to be caring. We all want to do the right thing. But at some sure. point, I've run out of cheeks to turn, and I'm going to call you out. And I'm calling out ABC. I'm calling out Joy, Joy Behar. I mean, uh, you know, ABC was even, well, as of about an hour ago, they were calling the station. Can you get him to stop? Um, and guess what? They didn't, they didn't tell me to stop. Um, it's not. Uh, you know, ABC... The people that consume your product, I don't know how many of my audience watch The View, um, but if you're going to support religious intolerance, at least, at least have the wherewithal to admit it. Um, and if that's the case, then I can make a decision whether I want to watch or not. Um, you know, I, John, I agree with you 100%. And, um, you know, let me know. Uh, I'm probably not going to be tuned in. Um, I imagine somebody's scribbling several notes to me right now in the legal department in New York City. 443 the time. I'm Rick Roberts, easiest man in town to find on News Talk 820 WBAP. All right, 449 the time. I'm Rick Roberts. This is the Court of Public Opinion on News Talk 820 WBAP. I uh, want to bring you uh, an update. Uh, most of you uh, know who David Prince is. He's the owner of Eco Gun Range uh, in Farmer's Branch in Louisville. Um, he decided after the police officer was killed in Richardson, uh, he would hold a raffle with 100% of all the proceeds going to the family. Um, raffle tickets are $10 each. Uh, they're rifling off pretty nice stuff. Uh, a scar rifle. Um, that's about a $3,200 rifle. Um, it's, uh, an AR 15 type rifle and an HK 40 cal and, uh, also a fire pit. Uh, really nice fire pit from Circle J Fabrication. Uh, you can call or come into the office, uh, to buy the raffle tickets. They're $10 each and all, every single nickel goes uh, straight to Officer Sherard's family. Um, and if you, if you're not interested in the firearms, I get that. Um, if you just want to make a donation, you can do that as well. You can go to Facebook and type in Eagle Gun Range, or you can go to their website. Uh, David Prince uh, is just, been, he's a great guy. I was out there a couple of months ago and saw he and his wife and they're just great people. And he's not looking for, I'm not doing an ad. I, you know, we were, we're not business partners uh, or anything. He's just a member of the community. Um, and we're very lucky to have him and Eagle Gun Range for uh, what they're doing. So believe it or not, I know that this audience responded because what was it, David? He said five minutes after he was on the air with me, they got, uh, it was ridiculous. They, he said within the 10 minutes. Within 10 minutes? 10 minutes, they raised $800, I believe. <laughs> Good Lord. Well, it hasn't stopped. Um, the update today is, uh, 331 donors and a total of $14,670. So if you're a part of that, thank you very, very much for stepping up, uh, for this, uh, fallen officer's family, $14,670. And, uh, again, if you want to get uh, the raffle tickets, you can call or go by one of their two locations, or if you just want to make a donation, 
And, um, you know, it's uh, he's just a great guy. And we appreciate every single nickel that you have uh, contributed in this effort. Um, all right. Let me uh, and see if we can talk to him tomorrow or the next day. Uh, for Because the raffle, I think, is in March. So we've still got several weeks. Um, man, I'd like to see that total go up so those uh, girls don't have to worry about school. Uh, the widow doesn't have to worry about changing their lifestyle because of uh, uh, the, the husband and the father. Um, it's not being around. It, you know, it's a tough thing. It's a very, very tough thing. Um, and thanks, you know, take a moment or two to thank police officers and sheriffs, to everybody in law enforcement. That is a tough, tough job, and not everybody is wired to do it. Uh, all right, let's go to uh, Andrew in Fort Worth. Andrew, thank you for waiting. I appreciate it. How you doing, Andrew? I'm doing good, Rick. How are you, sir? I'm doing well, thanks. I am a big traffic jam. Sorry about that. That's all right. Hey, you know, <laughs> joy, you know, joy to the joy to the Lord. You know, maybe Joy Behar will see all this, and maybe she'll change her mind. Her heart is hardened. You know, she's not born again. Well, we keep saying that she has no religious tolerance, but I got to tell you that Jesus Christ didn't either. He didn't tolerate anything but the truth. So the truth is that Jesus Christ is the only way to God. Yeah. Language. But they say that on their church website, it's a, it just, it's the unfortunate fact that in America we have watered the word of God down. So now. We have people denying the word altogether and saying, you know, let's be religiously tolerant because our laws say that we are a country that believes in the freedom of religion. But that's really about how we don't want you to tell us how to worship. We don't want the government to tell us how to worship Jesus because that's what they were doing in uh, the United Kingdom. That's well, yeah, I mean, uh, that's what, you know, the founders were well aware of that. Their church was also their government. Uh, you know, they got tired of being under the thumb of the Church of England, which was also their government. Uh, that's why they were so, uh, so devout about uh, the separation of church and state. But that wasn't the removal of God, and I can prove that to you. Um, it was not an establishment of religion. We'll get into that at some point. Uh, that's going to do it for me, man. Uh, I'm out of time. I don't know where the time went. Mark Levin's next. God's blessings to each and every one of you, whether you agree with me or not. That's always my priority. I'll be back with you tomorrow at 2, your afternoon drive. I'm Rick Roberts, News Talk 820 WBAP. When you get tired.